Greetings, users and programs. This is Itari Living Sacrifice, and today we're going to go over the definitive list, the definitive tier list for Season 2 Multiverses. With Samurai Jack being released the other day, he has really upset the meta, upset the balance of the multiverses. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to go character by character what tier they belong in and why they belong there. And I will say this. I play every character equally. The reason I have the authority to speak on this, I don't have a main. I don't have somebody that I play all the time or more than anybody else. I literally play all the characters equally. All right? So I've played every character. I've lost every character. I've won with every character. So we're going to go all these through these things individually. In the right hands, any of these characters can beat any of these other characters. I don't care if I put them in S tier, top tier, bottom tier. I don't care where I put them at. In the right hands, any of these characters can beat anybody. What I'm what I'm basing these off of are ease of play, how quickly can you pick up on the character, and how intuitive are they to play as an everyday player. Not as a top tier player, not as a top 50 player, but as an everyday player. How easy are they to pick up on? Okay. First off, we got we've got uh, Agent Smith. Agent Smith, I believe right now, I believe he's A tier. I want him to be S tier because he's one of my. He, he is so much fun to play. He is so much fun to play, but he has a couple issues. Uh, his moves are he's. His best move is his, his uh, in air, his forward special. Okay. <laughs> Gizmo's in chat and says they're S tier. That's right, Gizmo. That's right. His forward special in air is great. Like, he, he's a mid range. He's a mid range brawler, but he doesn't have answers to a lot of attacks. Like, let's, let's use an example. Like, he's slower. He's slower than Finn, for example. Uh, he doesn't have as much knockout capability as Joker. All right? But I do think he is a very strong choice. Very strong choice. I don't think you can go wrong playing with Agent Smith. Arya. Arya was one of my very first characters I played in multiverses. I absolutely love her. Absolutely love her. But she has almost zero, almost zero up knockout capability you, she depends on not side knockouts when half the game is getting somebody in a juggle and knocking them out the top it really hurts her it really hurts her i hate to do this i absolutely hate to do this but i think she belongs c tier at best maybe even d tier i'm going to start with here her being in c tier as much as I hate to do it, I wish she was B or A, but as much as I hate to do it, she belongs somewhere down here. And I'm going to start with C tier. I might move her down to D tier before the end of the of this video. Um, Batman. Batman, I think, is pretty much middle of the road. Like, he's got a strong kit. He's got a strong kit. Uh, he can knock people out on all directions. He's got a strong up where he's weakest is when he's coming down his his uh if you're in the, if you catch batman in the air you're probably gonna have priority with most characters you play against batman you're probably gonna have priority because his down special from the air it's great as far as the the best thing about it is you can direct where it goes but if finn gets if finn catches him it, with his with his up attack He's Batman's done for. Batman's done for. The good thing about Batman is he has a lot of versatility. All right, Banana Guard. Banana Guard. I bet y'all hate Banana Guard. Most of the people watching this video think Banana Guard is so overpowered and needs a nerf. And his forward special, uh, just he can, they can spam it. But that's the thing. Most people that play Banana Guard are going to spam their forward special. They're going to spam every one of his moves. Like, they just pick one move and stick to it. And that is why I think Banana Guard 
belongs strongly in B tier, even behind Batman. He is way too predictable. Banana Guard is way too predictable. And as long as you, all you have to do is dodge or parry. Like he's the easiest character in this game to read. You would pretty much know 99% of the time what he's going to do. What he's going to do, okay? So I, I don't really have much to say about Banana Guard because he's just, he, his, he hits hard. That's the best thing he's got going for him. If he didn't hit as hard as he, as he does, I would put him down here. I would absolutely put him down here, but he's so predictable. All right, Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny is our first S tier. Bugs Bunny is by far one of the most versatile heroes of the game, okay? Bugs Bunny has an answer for just about everything. Bugs Bunny can what I call touch of death you. Uh, his, he has fairly easy to do combos. He can spin, juggle you, and his bat. His bat is the most overpowered move in the game. It has priority over, over almost everything. The only person who's, uh, who might be, whose bat might become close would be Joker. We're not anywhere close to talking about Joker yet. But Joker's, Joker's crowbar is about on the same tier as Bugs Bunny. But Bugs Bunny has an answer for everything. Bugs Bunny has the, the safe. Bugs Bunny has that you you can he you know he's got range he's got mid and he's got close encounters he's got close encounters uh, capability so I think Bugs Bunny is by far one of the best characters in multiverses but at the same time as I know I said earlier I was going by by ease of use Bugs Bunny is fairly hard to learn fairly hard to learn but he's not that hard to learn to pick up on. Uh, all you have to do is play him for a couple matches, and you'll you'll pretty much be able to pick up on. It. But he, he has so many answers to everything. There's very few characters that have as much versatility as Bugs Bunny. Black Adam, Black Adam belongs B tier. By the way, y'all, this by the end of this video, you should notice. It should look kind of like a pyramid. There should be way more people in B tier than any other tier of this of the uh, of the tier list. If everybody's S tier, then nobody's S tier. If everybody's D tier, then nobody's nobody's D tier. Black Adam, I would put him some right here in between. Uh, Black Adam has a, his strongest attack is his clap. Is his clap. And as long as you can avoid that clap, and he, he's pretty easy to beat most of the time. His projectile bubble, very situational. His kick has a long reach. That is what keeps him up here. This is his kick. His toe has a fantastic hitbox. Absolutely fantastic hitbox. Hitbox. Um, I love his neutral air Y where he throws out a couple fireballs or lightning bolts um, but he is pretty darn hard to master if you can master Black Adam you would probably put him in A or S tier but as far as ease of use and being able to master I think he belongs very strongly in B tier alright probably gonna be one of the more controversial Probably going to be one of the more controversial takes for me. <sighs> Finn. I think Finn is one of the most annoying people to go against. I'm having a hard time saying if I, he goes in A or S. I'm going to say... I'm going to put him, start him off in A tier. Probably at the top of A tier. I might move him to S tier before the end of the video. I might move him to S tier at the top of the video. The reason for that is... Finn, he's, he only, he's only good up close. He has no range capabilities like most assassins. Um, he pretty much has to... You have to get up close and personal with him. The reason he's A tier and better than, better than, uh, than Smith, in my opinion, is he has a touch of death. If he gets you in a combo and that person is any good with them, he can touch a death you from zero to, to death. Um, very, fairly, fairly easily. 
Uh, he's got priority in a lot of his moves. Um, you will, you'll notice his freaking backpack has a much wider hitbox than it looks like on screen. So he will hit people and it draws them in. In my opinion, Finn strongly belongs at the top of A tier. Ooh, Gizmo. Gizmo, where does Gizmo belong? Again, Gizmo is one of these characters in the right hands. Gizmo can absolutely dominate. Absolutely dominate. But as far as ease of use for the average everyday player, mm, Gizmo is one of the more complicated one of the most complicated characters in the game. If you know how to play him, you would probably put him in A or S tier. I know how to play him, and I know how to play him fairly well. But he and he's he he just has a lot of weaknesses. He has a lot of weaknesses. One of his strengths is that he's short, so a lot of hits swing over his head. A lot of projectiles will go over his head. The ability to eat projectiles, how often do you see like his down special, his ground down special? How often do you see somebody actually use his treasure box? He's got one move. His treasure box is a move that you might have seen used a few times in play. And how often do you see it used effectively? Most people don't even know his ground down special even exists. His treasure box even exists. So I'm gonna right now I'm gonna put him at the bottom of B tier. Alright. Garnet. Where does Garnet belong? Oh man. Garnet should be. Should be A tier or even S tier. But unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't know what they've done with her. Cause I haven't really seen her take a lot of nerfs. But her reach. Basically, to win with her, you have you pretty much have to spam her her side attack. Her side attack is the most powerful thing. Um, again, within the right hands, she's absolutely fantastic. But unfortunately, her reach with most of her moves don't have a lot of priority. They they don't have priority over like her her neutral X or her neutral uh, attack is gonna get outclassed by almost everything by almost everything. She is fairly complicated. So in the right hands, she could absolutely, absolutely be A or S. And people in chat are saying you would put her in C and I'm strongly considering it. I am strongly considering it. I'm gonna keep her in B right now. B tier at the bottom of B tier, but I'm strongly considering putting her in C tier. Harley. Harley belongs very strongly in A tier. Uh, she is she is a very versatile assassin. Uh, she has a lot of reach. In 1v1s, she's very dependent on you standing back and waiting for them to attack you. Because if you if you wait for them to come to you, you're gonna you're totally gonna outclass them, outspeed them. She's got a lot of speed. Uh, I think she strongly belongs. In A tier, a lot of versatility with her. Iron Giant. Oh man, Iron Giant. I hate, hate to do this to Iron Giant because Iron Giant was one of my all, he's probably one of my all time favorite characters. He is so much fun to play. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we gotta put him in D tier. We've gotta put him in D tier. He cannot, if any assassins, any assassins or anybody with range he like he just can't handle them he can't handle them anybody else can juggle this poor guy he's great in twos if you got a good teammate that can keep other people off of you the other the enemy team off of you in twos he's fantastic when's the last time you saw somebody play him in ones when's the last time you went up against somebody in with uh, an iron giant in ones i'm sure they're out there i'm sure they're out there but he's just so like, until he gets rage, he's fairly useless. You, he's kind of dependent on his rage meter. And it, it, if you kit somebody, in, if they have rage meter, if you get somebody, if you go up against an iron giant with rage meter, all you got to do is keep them off the ground. All you got to do is keep them off the ground, and they can't use half of their arsenal. They can't use half their arsenal. I hate to do this, but iron giant, very strong. It's probably one of my favorite characters. Belongs in D tier. Jake, Jake, when his counterpart, 
when his counterpart is so high in A, I think Jake, I'm might be somewhere below between um, C and D tier. I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in C. I might move him down to D. He's definitely better than Iron Giant. I mean, think about this with Jake. Jake's fist has more range than Iron Giant. His uh, his his air charge attack is more range than Iron Giant. So he's definitely better than Iron Giant. I mean, I'd rather play Arya over Jake, personally. Personally. But uh, he doesn't have any response to range. His down attack has very short range. And his squat, where he squats in both directions, has very short range. Um... The only thing he's got going for him is his air attack where he charges up his fist, his, his stretchy fist. That is his main attack. That's all he really does. That's all he really does. I hate to do it to him, but C, maybe D tier. Maybe D tier. Jason. When Jason first got released, I would absolutely put him in A tier. Unfortunately, I don't know if they slowed him down or what they did to him during this latest patch, but he just feels so clunky now feels absolutely clunky <sighs> i think he's better i think he's better than banana guard gizmo and garnet so i'm gonna put him on b tier but he if they do anything else to him if they do anything else to this poor kid to this poor murderer uh move him down to c tier but right now b tier lebron LeBron in the right hands is absolutely vicious. Absolutely vicious. Unfortunately, his power level, his power level is so weak. Um, it he takes probably the most finesse in this game. Like it, the in the right hands, absolutely powerful, but so hard to master, so hard to get good with, and very situational. One, if you throw your basketball and lose the basketball, it doesn't come back to you, and you don't have the your your cooldown on your basketball is already used up. You're gonna have a tough time. Um, he's basically you. You ha the only move that you can really reach people with is his dash, uh, his forward special, an air forward special. So once you get good at LeBron, he's a lot stronger than B tier. But uh, right now, I'm going to put him in B tier. And I might even move him down. Might even move him down. Marvin. Marvin. Hmm. Marvin is one of my favorite characters to play. I absolutely love playing Marvin. He is very complicated, though. And his cooldowns are so long. His strongest moves, even his basic attack, pretty much. Even his basic charging of his... Uh, of his basic attack has such a long cooldown <sighs> but he hits hard he hits very hard and he's very versatile very annoying like he's pretty good in 1v1s actually his uh air down special and his ground uh, not special his uh air down attack and his ground down attack very strong gets a lot of people ah He's he's in B tier, but he's is he better than Black Adam? See, against Black Adam, he'd have a tough time. So I'm gonna put him right behind Black Adam. I'm gonna put him right behind Black Adam. Morty, another another one in the right hands. Morty is dangerous, but he he has his his cooldowns. His cooldowns are so long. He has he has to really get up close and personal for most of his basic attacks. And it's really tough for him to do that. Like, if his gun is on cooldown, it hits for nothing. It hits for nothing. His rock attack from the ground, probably his best attack. Uh, he's really good in twos. Ah, man, I hate to do it to him, but I, th I think he belongs in, uh, in C tier. Do I think he's... Hmm. I am going to put him above Jake. I am going to put him above Jake, but I think he belongs in C tier. I think a lot of people, a lot of people are going to disagree with this, but he's by far one of the most complicated characters in the game. I was literally just playing him on stream earlier. We did great with him. We did great with him. 
but he has way his cooldowns are just way too long and he's just has uh, once you kind of figure him out uh, who you're playing up against and how their play style he's fairly easy to beat fairly easy to beat rain dog rain dog is probably the sleeper of this entire series so, he might be he might belong in a tier he might belong in a tier he's got range he's got brawling capability he's great in twos he's a great teammate to have and on uh, on in he's a great teammate to have with you because he can uh, he can pull you from almost certain death um he has so many answers to so many things i i don't know why we don't see more people play rain dog rain dog is very strongly ah man he's probably a tier He's probably A tier. I'd put him. I might put him above Harley. I might put him above Harley. He's definitely over Batman. Definitely over Batman. I don't know why more people don't play Rain Dog. I don't have an answer for that. I love Rain Dog. He's he's one of the most versatile characters in the game. I'm gonna put him here. I'm gonna put him above Harley. This is probably gonna get a lot of controversy because I think he's very strong. Next up would be Rick. Oh man, Rick is Rick is pretty p dang powerful. He's got his moves are powerful. Um, he's very versatile. He's got strong up damage capability. Uh, he can silence you. Uh, his side attacks are strong. Uh, his escape capability, you know, his, his uh, portal gun, very strong, very strong. I think I'm gonna put him above Batman. I didn't think I was going to put anybody in B tier above Batman, but I am, I'm going to put him in B tier. I might even, actually, you know what? I think he belongs up here in A tier. So let's put him there. Just because Samurai Jack is so new, I'm going to save him for last. I'm going to save him for last. Shaggy. Most people think Shaggy needs nerfs. Everybody need, says Shaggy needs nerfs. I'm sorry. Shaggy is one of the most predictable characters in this game. It, most people you play up against they're just gonna spam their sidekick they're just gonna spam their sidekick he he is so predictable like you can dodge most of his attacks you can parry most of his attacks <sighs> i think i'm gonna put him in c tier i think i'm gonna put him in c tier like he's he's he hits strong He's most people's, he's the free to play character along with Wonder Woman, right? So a lot of people learn him, so you see him a lot. But in the grand scheme of things, he's not very, he's not that good. He's not that good. Very easy to counter. Very easy to counter. I'm going to put him below Morty. He's very easy to learn, though. He's very easy to learn. No, I'll put him above Morty. I'll put him above Morty. I think he is easier to learn than Morty. In fact, I will put him above Arya. I will put him above Arya because he does have up damage capability. He does have down damage or knockout capability, up damage, up up knockout capability side. That that's what saves him. He's he's a pretty versatile character, but he's just so easy to read most of the time. So easy to read most of the time. Next up was Steven. Steven, I love the show. He's fantastic in twos, um, and with the right teammate, if you with the right teammate, he's absolutely fantastic to have as a teammate. But as far as versatility, very weak. Um, I would put him somewhere between C and D. I'm gonna I'm gonna start him off here. He's very hard to play in one v ones. Again, in the right hands, I'm sure you've played against a Steven that absolutely beat your ass. But on average, on average, probably not going to run across too many Stevens beating your ass in 1v1s. This Stripe. Stripe is a very confusing character. I don't know why they took away, they gave him one where he throws the circular saw. Let's call it the circular saw. Circular saw. I don't know why they nerfed a circular saw. It's hard to hit. They only have one now. Uh, the good news is, is it does circle around platforms, but you know... He's very slow, very predictable. When he when he hits you, 
He's very powerful. Like his, he has a lot of power. That's a, there's a reason you don't see too many stripes being played. You don't see him very often. Uh, I play him all the time. You know, all my characters are between level five and seven, five and eight. I play him all the time and I do great with him, but you don't go up against too many of them. He's fairly complicated to learn. Uh, he damages himself with one of his strongest abilities. I'm gonna put him right about here. I'm gonna put him above Morty. Next up, Superman. Superman, where does Superman belong? When, when this game first released, he was by far, by far S tier. He was one of the most annoying characters to play. And he had so many answers to so many things. You would go up against crazy ass Superman. You'd go up against Superman that could one, basically touch to death you, juggle you, he had an answer for everything and they've done so much to superman he is you don't you do not see superman being played as often as you used to i think he is a very strong character a very versatile character they took away a couple of his perks that he that was very important to him i think he belongs somewhere i don't know if he's better than batman i'm gonna put him behind batman right now but man did they nerf the heck out of him He's got a move. When's the last time you ever saw somebody use his ice breath effectively? You never see anybody use his ice breath. He's, it's one of his weakest moves. Nobody ever uses it. If a character has a move that nobody uses, that just makes them way more predictable. So I'm going to put him somewhere. He's either top, top B, low A. I might move Batman up here. I might move Superman up here, but I think he's a very strong B. All right, Taz. There's somebody in my community that almost exclusively plays Taz, and they will absolutely wreck you 85% of the time with Taz. 1v1s, 2v2s. He will absolutely whoop your butt. But unfortunately, unfortunately, he's just not as good as he used to be. Um, I'm going to put him below Marvin in between Marvin and Jason uh, he just has no range his ability to eat projectiles has been nerfed dramatically I don't think he can even at last uh, last I heard he can't even eat Bugs Bunny's rocket anymore so I'm, I'm gonna put him smack dab in the middle I think he might be one of the like the most middle of the road character in this game he might be the most middle of the road in the right hands he can absolutely whoop up on you he's fairly easy to learn um i think he's better than shaggy as far as learning and versatility um and he hits hard he's got very powerful but he has very very powerful side attacks but his up his up attack to knock somebody from into the uh top of the map very weak very weak He's he has got he's got great ground control, but his air game very weak. Uh, his dog pile, probably one of the strongest moves in the game, or probably one of the I'm not going to say strongest moves in the game. Very easy to ca catch somebody in it, but it doesn't have the power that it used to. Joker is kind of broken right now. I think he's in the same boat as as Finn. His ability to kill you. Touch to death you from the top of the map, extremely powerful. His side, his ability to hit, kill you from the side, very weak. Um, but I do think he belongs in A tier. I'm not sure if he belongs at the top. He belongs somewhere in here. I would definitely think he's better than Rick. Fairly easy to learn. His down special, his ground down special, nobody uses it. When's the last time you saw somebody use it? It's a practically useless move. Way too slow. Way too situational. So I'm going to put him uh, somewhere like right here. I'm going to put him at the bottom. In the right hands, he will absolutely beat your ass because of his ability. His, his crowbar, just like Bugs Bunny, just like Bugs Bunny has the ability, has priority to uh, knock you out from uh, if, he get, if they get you in the air. But he just has too many moves that people never use. I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip to Velma just because Velma definitely 
definitely D tier right now. She used to be much better. She used to be one of the most versatile characters in the game. Um, she's one of the most confusing characters to play. Her air down special goes up and her up special goes down and and she has so many cooldowns and her range like it's just she's by far one of the most complicated player uh, heroes to play you hardly ever see her when's the last time you saw her in a 1v1 very i i hate to do it i hate to do it but she's she's d tier right now tom and jerry tom and jerry strongly believe he's s tier I think he's somewhere, uh, he's very complicated, I'm sorry, I said S tier, uh, I meant A tier, very complicated, I'm going to put him somewhere around here, because I do think, I do think he's fairly complicated to play, but he hits powerfully, he's got range, he's got, uh, brawling up close capabilities, uh, his cooldowns are not that hard to manage, and it's you don't you don't lose Tom as often as you do, say, um, Marvin's Marvin's cooldowns are way harder to manage. Uh, who else was it that had cooldowns? Morty, you don't lose Tom like you get. It's very easy to get Tom back, whereas Morty's grenades and his all of his moves have his cooldowns are so hard to manage. Whereas Tom gets Tom, or, uh, Jerry, gets Jerry back very, very quickly, or the other way around. I'm not. I don't even know which one's Tom and which one's Jerry. Honestly, Wonder Woman. I think might be the best all-around character in the game. They nerf her. They buff her. They don't know what to do with her. They don't know what to do with her. She's probably my favorite for a new player. If you are a new player and you want to get, you want to. Just have somebody that's easy to learn, hits powerfully, has great mid mid range. Even even I would even go far go so far as distance with her lasso. I would say she belongs somewhere between A and S tier. I don't think she's as good as Bugs in the right hands, but she's pretty dang good. I think she belongs strongly, strongly top A tier. Now. The most controversial because right now T Samurai Jack just came out. Just came out. Everybody in chat is like S tier, S tier, S tier. In fact, the first week he came out, we probably would have made a whole tier just for him. S plus tier. We probably would have put him up here. However, now that I've played him, now that I've played him more, um, I do think he's S tier, but I don't think he's as good as Bugs. I don't think he's as good as Bugs. I personally would rather play Samurai Jack over Bugs, but he he's getting easier and easier to read. This is he's only he's been out less than a week, but he's getting easier and easier to read. What I love about Samurai Jack is his kit works exactly the way you think it should his hitboxes for the most part hit exactly where you think they're going to hit uh his sword has fairly long range it hits when you think it's gonna hit he's fairly easy to learn but uh i think right now he's somewhere between i think i'm gonna put him in s tier next week i might completely change my mind and put him at the bottom of a tier but right now just because I haven't had that much experience with him. I have a hard time telling you where he belongs. But I I don't think you're going to see as much Samurai Jack play over the next week or two. I think he had his day. I think everybody played him because he was brand new and he was he's a very strong character. But I think in the next week or two, you're going to see a lot, a lot less Samurai Jacks um, than, than you saw the first week he was out, in my opinion. So I'm right now. I'm gonna place him there. By the way, I don't play Bugs. Bugs is not my favorite character, but I do think he is probably even even after they nerfed him, even after they heavily nerfed him in the last patch. I still think he is by far the best, most versatile character in the game and in the right hands. 
even even in the wrong hands can still absolutely destroy i think this is a pretty strong list y'all i think this is a pretty strong list i think we're gonna i think we're gonna close it out right here i think we're gonna close it out right here tell me what you think in the comments tell me how right you think i am tell me how wrong i think i am you think i am i think this is a pretty darn good unbiased tier list so thank y'all for hanging out as always give it a big thumbs up subscribe follow we'll see you on the next one come join us on the stream we play multiverses almost every day four o'clock eastern saturday we play a lot a lot more uh we play from like 11 or 2 we pretty much stream all day and we'll see you on the next one and remember to keep moving forward <laughs>